All right, we're back at it. Uh, this is X Flight Six Flags in America, BNM built in 2012. Uh, contrary to what you might think, this is actually one of the most boring rides I've ever operated. I hated having to work this ride. Uh, attendant or operator, checking restraints is boring because you're all by yourself, couldn't talk to anyone. And an operator was boring uh, because it took the attendants forever to check the train. And all you ever did was press this button and these two. Um, before we get into uh, operating the ride, I want to show you this. Um, so, in the morning, every morning, all the rides have certain procedures that you have to go through to uh, start it up for the day. Uh, this one has it listed out on one of the menus in the panel. Uh, pretty much all you do is you go around and you press all of the stops all throughout the rides. There's some on the lift, transfer track, transfer shed. Uh, in the station, and then once all those are uh, tested, then the uh, computer kind of decides for itself if these things are good. Uh, lift counterweight, checking the counterweights there, and then uh, checking to make sure the magnetic fins are not out of alignment because that could mess with the brakes. Uh, and then these two right here, um, this ride called the photo wise and they were at the front and the back of the station and basically if someone were to walk out onto the lift hill or out onto the transfer while the uh, train was parked in the station this would start flashing yellow and you'd have to press the acknowledge photo wise button uh, with the HMI enable before you could dispatch a train so if you ever want to mess with some operators who look like they don't know what they're doing just go to the front or the back of the station and flag the photo wise and it'll take them five minutes to figure out what happened. I remember I did it once at Gatekeeper and it took them, <laughs> took them a little bit to figure out what was going on. I guess it doesn't happen there very often. Um, but yeah, going back to the main panel, uh, these are the air gates. So this is the only coaster with more than one rap operator at Great America besides American Eagle, that the operator is the one that controls the air gates. Uh, and each side is controlled individually. And these uh, little pen arrows were added on because no one could ever remember. Because it says left gate, but it means left gate uh, according to the direction of travel of the train. So you want to open the gate over here, on the, which is on your left, and you go to flip this one and it opens that one uh, because it's, it's opposite. So that was kind of confusing a lot, especially with uh, the people Six Flags hires. Uh, fun fact, if you apply for uh, the foods position and you fail the math test, uh, they offer you to be a ride operator. So people that can't do basic addition, subtraction, aren't good enough to be cashiers, but they are good enough to operate $20 million uh, pieces of machinery. So that's what that is. Uh, control power on just uh, turns on this panel, allows it to be used. Operation mode, so the newer B&Ms have it uh, all onto one switch, the older ones had it on, uh, the older ones had it on two separate switches. <coughs> and then maintenance bypass, uh, that, that allowed them to send the train without any of the four operators pushing their buttons down at their station. It also let them restart uh, the ride without having to send people out to the blocks to clear them individually. And this key switch actually uh, has three positions, off, on, and then it's spring loaded to the right. So when you're ready to send a train, you turn this to the right, and then these would start flashing. Um, lock all restraints, lock them all. Uh, something with this ride, similar to Goliath, was every single time a train came into the station, all of the harnesses had to be opened. It was called cycling, and it would flash on the panel view which uh, which seats weren't cycled. And the reason for that is actually when the coaster is locked or in the station, you press the lock button. Only one of the two cylinders that holds the restraint down locks, and it alternates each time, so that each uh, uh, that each train or each cylinder gets the same amount of cycles over its lifetime. Because uh, you know it's a B and M, they thought of everything. It's the uh, Rolls Royce roller coasters. Uh, so something else that really annoyed me was 
This ride used to have really nice mushroom buttons, but then they broke. And even though they only cost $5.38 to replace, like these, uh, since we didn't have any spare ones, they didn't want to order anymore, so they threw these on there. And they are much more painful to push and hold down than the nice mushroom buttons, which was quite annoying. I totally refused to operate that ride after they did this. I think that happened in 2015 or 16 that they replaced the mushroom buttons with these. Uh, so unlocking restraints, I don't think I have a picture of the restraint screen. But here it is on Thunderbird. And so you could unlock them in pairs. And so what you would do is you would push and hold the unlock restraints button, and then you would push and hold on the touch screen which pair you want to unlock. And if you want to unlock all of them, there was a big button in the middle. Uh, this looks a lot different because it's newer. But same concept. Um, acknowledge, you just uh, would press that button to acknowledge errors. Or when you were starting the ride up, you would uh, it would pop up with messages and you'd have to acknowledge that you read the message. Uh, and then the, the newer B&Ms have a timer in them, so every 24 hours it'll stop operating in, until you complete this checklist again. It kind of tells you what to do. And I, I really like these new B&M panels. They're very simple. All the functionality is in this touchscreen. There's about 20 different screens you can go to. Uh, right here, the login out, log out. Uh, we never used this on any of our rides. Superman had this too. And all I knew was that if you hit the log out button, uh, maintenance was going to come up really pissed off because then they had to uh, log back in and they usually didn't remember the password. Uh, but other parks, I think individual operators, you know, like you work at a cash register, you log in yourself. Individual operators would log in. And there were different uh, classes you could be put into, like supervisor, operator, maintenance, that sort of thing. Uh, over here in the red section, lift, stop, lift start, I think you can figure out what those do. Uh, the east stop reset was blue, which I really enjoyed. Uh, the acknowledge button was blue too. And I would just push it all the time because I liked looking at the blue light illuminating and it didn't do anything. This is one of the only rides at the park that has an actual lockout that actually cuts power to the ride. So if you're going to go into a fenced in area or something, you would switch to the off position, you'd throw a lock in there, and then uh, up here would come up with a message. And there were two lockouts. This is the main panel one. Uh, and then there was another one, we called it the landscaping lockout. Yeah. And it was down by the storage shed on the base. And it was basically, its purpose was if someone needs to cut the grass, they can just do it from down there instead of trying to have to teach the guys who mow the lawn how to lock out a ride and all that. Uh, and this was a procedure at Six Flags. You threw this little stop sign on there. It was called lockout tag out. And so uh, this was the last year B&M did this style panel. This is Gatekeeper right here. You can see that they kind of, the button layout is the same, but they changed it up. Also at Gatekeeper, the air gates work different. The enable people can open and close the gates. Uh, and then the operator selects uh, what side they're doing or whatever, and then it opens and closes them. This is the main screen, so this is what you would see while you're operating. Uh, it tells you where the trains are, station transfer, slow down, main, that's the name of the brakes, and the lift hill. Uh, this right here, if you watched my Goliath one, you would have uh, seen that it had those counters. This was much better. So whoever was pushing their button, it would be green, and if they let off and then started pushing again, it would flash red. So you know exactly who the idiot was that let go. Uh, this is the cycle counter down here. It tells you how many dispatches you got in the hour. Uh, storage track. Uh, the amount of operators you had selected. So there were four buttons. Each person was supposed to push and hold. But if we were only operating with, say, three people, then uh, you could then maintenance we could switch it into two remote operators, and the front two buttons would be disabled. And this is the button you click to get to the restraint screen. 
And then up here is the e-stop and error status. So it's not a trouble light on this ride, it's a ride error. And this would either flash yellow or red. And when it was red, it would sound an alarm with it. And it would tell you the code of the error that it was. And then e-stop, it would tell you which e-stop that you pressed. And it has a little uh, weather monitoring system. So if, if, if the wind got too high or it got too cold, a little error would pop up down here. Like wind gusts have reached the danger zone. And then if it got too high, it would actually ride error and stop. Um, so Six Flags, of course, they lock down their rides. They don't let you touch anything. So if you look at Gatekeeper, you can see this is the main menu. And there's all these screens that you can access. Uh, it's called Appendix A, B, C, and D. On X-Flight, the only ones available were these three up here to the operator. The rest of these were hidden unless you were in manual mode or maintenance enable mode. And that was just the right operation screen, the e-stop screen, and the safety restraint screen. So, for example, on Gatekeeper, if you had a right error, you could click on it and it would tell you what the right error was. For us, you click on it, nothing happened. That was disabled. So they had a couple more screen. Uh, so there, oh, here's another ride startup screen. So you turn the power on, the air compressors start up, and then they, uh, once they're pressurized, you do the lamp test, push acknowledge, and then uh, you had to push and hold the ride start for a certain amount of time. So it would play like three separate alarms, it takes about 30 seconds. Uh, check that all the e-stops are pulled out, then you throw it in the mode that you want and turn on the lift. So these uh, these are pretty self-explanatory. I mean, a monkey could do it, figure out how to turn these rides on, because it literally walks you through it. But uh, some more examples of panels around this time. I think this is Intimidator, Carowinds. They all look pretty much the same as X-Flight. This is uh, another wing coaster. Uh, this is the the transfer track panel. I've got a better picture here. This is Swarm, but ours looked exactly the same. Did the same thing. Uh, so when actually it was built, Six Flags paid extra so no one could build a copy of theirs. And people thought they were going to build a bunch of them. The, the reason I think Six Flags doesn't build these is they can't reduce staffing as much on these. Because you can run it with three people, but by golly, you're setting trains about once every six minutes. It's really difficult to uh, get this ride dispatch, and it's kind of unsafe because you can't see the front of the station. Because the operator has some blind spots, and when there's no two people in the front, people could be standing up there and you wouldn't know. So I think that's the reason is it's harder to cut down on labor, because we, we pretty much ran that thing five or six people every single day. Uh, even on slower days, it was it was. I felt as a supervisor, it was mean to drop them down to three three people. It was a lot of work. Those trains are super long. Here's another example from another one of these B and M's. Same thing. Uh, this is a uh, Wild Eagle Dollywood. Same thing. The only thing is, I don't know why our acknowledge button is blue and theirs is green. Who made that decision? Six Flags? Dollywood? b and M? I don't get it. Uh, this is another one of the screens you get to access. This is on Wild Eagle, but ours was the same. Oh, and you can see there's this ride has a ride error. It's yellow. So there are a bunch of these screens. You could see like how fast trains were going, how long it took them to get around the course. That's what I, that's what's on this one. The speeds of the train and that stuff. And I really like these new, this is Thunderbird, I like these new B&M panels. I've always said if I'm going to build a coaster in my backyard, it's going to be a B&M, because these panels are so beautiful. Fury has this exact same panel. You can see it's got this huge touchscreen. They updated the, the UI, it looks much nicer. But you can see the buttons are pretty much the same. The only difference is there's a set of lift stop, start and stop. It's launch enable and launch disable. And then just uh, real quick. So these right here, 
So the train had contacts that, those are the clicking noise you hear when it leaves and enters. That's the train going over the contacts, and that's what gives power to the train and unlocks the restraints, communicates with the ride system. And so it had proc switches, but it also had these very precise proc switches. So it would pull in quick and slow down, and then it would really slow down until it was perfectly over these four. And that's how it knew that it was in the perfect position. And uh, so B&M thought of, well, what if it goes too far? And so what their solution was is if it went too far, you would press and hold the lockout restraints button, and the train would back up just a little bit to its proper position. And uh, Six Flags didn't know this existed. So one day uh, when it overshot and they went down, the maintenance guys pushed this button and it moved backwards. And they're all 70 years old. And, you know, they were around when American Eagle was built and powered by Donkey. And so features like that scare them, so they disabled that. So every time that it went forward, even though B&M had already thought of that and it would take one second for you to back it up, uh, we disabled that, so any time it misparked, we had to go follow downtime procedures and go down for about 10 minutes while we waited for maintenance to come out and restart it. Uh, there were other things with this ride, too, that Six Flags disabled. Like, it's got the rolling block where the two trains will move together, even though uh, one train's not completely out of the station, the other one will come in a certain distance. The uh, When it was built, the distance was pretty... Uh, was much closer together than what it is now. They uh, made the distance between it, the distance required between them to be much bigger. So it's hardly a rolling block at all, which is annoying because that serves no purpose other than it scared management because they're like, oh, there's two trains in the same block at the same time. How are people going to be able to understand that? Even though I don't think anyone even paid attention to that, considering they couldn't even figure out how to measure if someone was 54 inches tall. Uh, but they disabled that, and so now the, the trains come to get in together, or the trains move together, but very far apart, not as close as BNM intended them to be. And then it's another quirk. This is a another. This is a European wing coaster, and they have the European um, touchscreen, not the Alan Bradley one. But uh, yeah, that's it for this one. See you in the next one.